how's it going everybody? My name is Armando. Welcome back to another, well, Dead Frontier video. Wow, it feels so weird saying that after so freaking long, guys. Got my heart racing and everything. <laughs> anyway, guys, we're not here to talk about how long it took to upload this damn video, you know? What we're here to talk about is, well, a weapon huh? that's come out recently that pretty much took the community by, you know, pretty much by storm. Uh, some posts here in the forums pretty much explaining the stats and how much it's been buffed or nerfed and I remember correctly when I was in J Frontier's live stream he was pretty much saying this weapon sucks it's not good it doesn't have knockback and eventually I didn't really buy it because of him again not because it was a bad weapon but because I was watching his live stream and I said man I don't think it's worth the 1800 credits but again upon reading the forum guys uh, thing his post in the community forum I pretty much bit the bullet and said you know what let's get it and let me tell you something it really has amazed me it has decent knockback well it doesn't really have knockback that much but it, it kind of pushes him a little bit and the damage that it does is incredible all right I'm gonna make a separate video on this and the wraith cannon but right now I just want to focus purely purely on the sand score trick all right guys, so this is just a mid-edit. At first, I was originally gonna make just the Sand Scorcher, but honestly, it doesn't really make sense to kind of just do a part two, you know what I'm saying? So I just figured, you know what, let's do a Sand Scorcher versus the Wraith Cannon, all right? <laughs> so, the Sand Scorcher, it has a 600 route capacity, it has average reload speed, so you want to get that reload speed a little up there, you know? It has effing fast attack speed, it has very low accuracy, well not very low, but it has low accuracy, it has zero critical chance, so don't expect any like crazy, oh look there's a freaking bunny out next to me, so I guess that's a good chance to show this off. Anyway, zero critical chance, 120 explosive skill required, and what people really, really get excited about is the average damage per second slash, you know, how much you're doing per hit with 124 reloading, so we hit about 170 or 680 damage per, average damage per second, damage per hit is 17, hits per second is 10. And obviously this is worth 1800 credits or if I'm not 75 mil in the market so yeah I had to sell some things to pretty much get this weapon you know and I got a little poor because of that but honestly I personally I feel like it's been kind of like a great weapon to me so far I got up like four levels in like two three hours with this thing so it's been pretty much incredible but anyway uh, let's just try it out on this uh, you know this uh, little flaming zombie you know let's let's see what he got so it shouldn't take long. I mean, look at that. It's just incredible. You know, it, it, it's pretty much high damage, high damage output, very fast attack speed, and it, it will just melt a lot of things in its way. Look at that. See? Boom, 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 and it's dead. Do you guys want to see the loot? I guess we'll see the loot. Or whatever. And we got a desert camel, which isn't the worst, but hey, it's better than nothing. So yeah, as you can tell, it does significantly a lot of damage per second. It's very, very fast. I, I love it so far, the Sand Scorcher. Where I did have a little bit of a problem with it. Well, you know what? Let's just get you the Wasteland first and then talk about it. So yeah, let me just skip this part. Uh, so you guys at the Wasteland. All right, whew, the Wasteland. Yeah, I, I really can't talk and kind of just walk at the same time. So now I can pretty much focus. But anyway, we're here at the Wasteland to try it out against, well, Wasteland mobs, you know? I'm not really going to try this thing out in the Death Row or the regular South Bunker because, again, I feel like this weapon was made more for this area. And obviously, when, the, you know, the Ashwoods comes out, which has been leaked for a while, I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be a good weapon to use in those areas. But again, I'm here to try this out on the Wastelands and how you have to pretty much change your fighting style rather than just depend on a race cannon that would just knock everything away 10,000 feet but yeah without further ado let me just show you what I'm talking about so the wraith cannon it uses 14 millimeter rifle ammo 480 round capacity slow release uh, reload speed effing fast attack speed ultra low accuracy very low minigun critical chance 100 strength required 120 machine gun required all right blah 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 we have the average damage per second which is 469.58 or 517 7.15 damage per second average dps with 124 reload it's 504.87 damage per hit 18 times 3 which equals 54 or 90 hits per second 8.696 buckshot spread 36 degrees so with the race cannon obviously you have a lot more output going out you have bullets spreading everywhere whereas the sand scorcher i want to say well you'll have to see i feel like it's just superior in every way i i just again using the sand scorcher does has its negatives but when it comes to grinding it's just it, it's great you know you get experience so quickly compared to the wraith cannon but where the wraith cannon will 
will prevail is this knockback. Pretty much you can just hold left mouse button and nothing can get near you because of its knockback. And obviously it's damage output so things still do die rather quickly. Um, but uh, again, you guys would just have to see what it's made of and yeah, let's just keep it going. Obviously there is my damage boost. I wish I could uh, toggle it off but you cannot. It's just part of their frontier. I heard they're working on the future to toggle it off. I'm not too sure but yeah, I have uh, 46 damage output or damage boost, 44% uh, speed boost, and yeah, and obviously when you grind with these weapons, they are 50.15%. I don't know. It's just a lot of crap I gotta, you know, move up on. Is this the, yeah, it is. All right, so we're just gonna make some noise. Uh, as you can already see, it has a little bit of damage output. I mean, damage, uh, damage not crack. I, I apologize if I gotta like, you know, mumble a little bit. And obviously, I use the raise cannon to just get away a little bit. Uh, and kind of give myself a little bit of a little bit of a space between me, me and them. But yeah, it's not a bad weapon. It forces you to just uh, adapt to the new playstyle. Because again, with the Wraith Cannon, you just hold the left mouse button, and you have no fear of getting, you know, touched by them. But you gotta zigzag a little bit. Don't walk in a straight line like I'm doing. Uh, and again, the Wraith Cannon will come out to kind of give you that little like space between you and them. But once you get the play. The movement down it, it pretty much is an amazing weapon uh i, I love it uh, and i look at my top left corner xp just rains on me and look at the horde size it just again it destroys everything in its past i, I went from 150 to 68 it just again it destroys immediately and again the damage output i'm putting is 24.85 no chance of critical hit remember that there is no chance of critical hits but once you get the movement down, it's really not a bad weapon, and with 100 plus reload speed, it holds its ground. You see, look again, look at the horde size, and just look at how it melts them. And what I love about it is, yes, it's an explosive, it's, it's you know, it's a fire, it's a flamethrower. And what I love about it is that it hits from behind. It, it, the flame pash, uh, pushes through the, the first enemy, and it gets behind them, rather than just focusing on whatever it's shielding them in the front. Just gotta be careful here, man, I'm, I'm losing a little focus. But again, it's going to be a little bit of a skill issue in the beginning. Well, for me anyway, it was a little bit of a skill issue because when you go from having a weapon that just literally doesn't let anything near you to having a weapon that has a little bit of knockback, has damage, but again, it, you aren't invincible to these guys anymore. You have to, again, get used to it, you know? And of course, it doesn't have to be a raised cannon. It could be a shotgun or a machine gun that just has the, dam the knockback and, and you're, you're good. You're not going to die. You know, and I'm having this much ease in Wasteland, and I'm not really breaking too much of a sweat. I mean, I only have 44 speed boost. I don't have 67, 70% these that uh, speed boost. Some of these people have, or 80% damage boost, and yeah, it, it's not terrible. I'm not like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. You know, it, it's still just a weapon that can really, really just feel s more or less safe. And obviously, now let's just switch to the Raised Cannon, and with the Raised Cannon, I'm gonna feel safe no matter what. This is where the Raised Cannon is the most powerful weapon still. In that frontier there was controversy saying that you know the race cannon is going to be overtaken eventually but I, uh, you know i kind of find it a, a little bit hard to believe because you know this weapon real life cost almost well it is it does cost half a thousand dollars <laughs> so you expect the weapon like this to hold its own for a very very long time it's been 80 years since its release and yes it's showing age but it's still a magnificent weapon it's just not going anywhere for a long time and again what has it going for it as well is the unlimited ammo but with this weapon, I all that pressure I have in my heart or whatever, or my freaking stomach where I feel like I'm going to throw up, goes away. Once this thing comes out, I am stress-free. I'm not going to be nervous about dying. I'm not going to be nervous about getting killed or anything like that. Because, look, I'm literally not even holding shit that much anymore. And I can just watch a movie or just pretty much just focus on anything else that isn't grinding. And this is where this weapon just it shines. It, it's amazing. You know, you're not stressing about anything. So, again, uh, Sand Scorcher, really good. I heard they buffed it multiple times because, again, people were complaining about it. I mean, yeah, if you're buying it with your credit card, it's going to be worth $60. And if I'm buying $60 worth of pixels, I want to make sure that... Ooh, I got to scratch my nose. Ooh! I, oh, what button did I press? <laughs> I want to make sure that the weapon that I'm buying isn't, you know, isn't a piece of crap. And uh, yeah, yeah, it, it does it, it does really good work. I, I love it. Uh, you can focus on the horde size. Look, look how quickly it goes down. It's it's just a beast. And I'm gonna keep this weapon for a long time. Ammo for it is really not that expensive. Uh, if you guys have the funds, obviously. But with this weapon, you can easily, easily reach with it. And of course, the other thing that kind of threw me off a little was, you know kind of like moving left and right or around with it it, it kind of has like a little delay rather than the wraith can you just do this you know i don't know maybe it's just me but i feel like my um 
my speed to turn around or move left and right is hindered with this weapon. Oh crap, I'm getting a little bombarded here. But yeah, that's what I mean. Like, eventually the race cannon or whatever knockback weapon you have has to come out to give you a little bit of a distance between them. But overall, once you get used to it, yeah. But yeah, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like there's a delay to move it side to side or around you. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but uh, overall, yeah, it, it's not a terrible weapon. I, for one, would um, recommend this weapon to somebody that doesn't have the money to afford a race cannon. It's only 77 mil, which, well, oh, Armando, it's only 77 mil, you know? <laughs> but compared to 150 million uh, Death Frontier money for a, race, for a non unlimited race cannon or 500 dollars for an unlimited race cannon, this really isn't the worst weapon in the world. I, I've been using it more than a race cannon to grind only because the amount of, like, just look at my experience. The, the speed in which, or the quickness in which I get experience, it's incredible. Like, I can grind here for an hour and I already leveled up, less than an hour probably. And I don't get bored because like, I just see that like, speed just rise and rise and rise and rise. So yeah, I think this is pretty, pretty much it for the explanation. I'm just going to head back to the Precinct 13 or second on Bunker because I'm also going to make a video on something else soon. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, let's just transition there. All right, see you guys back there. Ooh, and that pretty much wraps up the video, guys. I am somehow magically teleported to close to death row. But anyway, let's focus on the topic at hand. So Sand Scorcher and Wraith Cannon. Honestly, they're very close to each other. But in terms of grinding, definitely, definitely the Sand Scorcher. It just melts everything in the way. I love the fact that it goes through multiple zombies instead of just the one bullet that, you know, has to hit something in the, in the front to kill it. While this one, you know, you can just go through multiple enemies and it'll hit the thing behind it. Which, again, I love. I love and I just love. And, and, I, and I honestly find myself using this weapon more than the Wraith Cannon right now because, well, again, it just really destroys everything. And in terms of average DPS, I think it's more, I think it's 100 more than the Wraith Cannon. It's just, yeah, it, you just can't go wrong with it. But in terms of negativities, I mean, the only negative thing I can think for the Sand Scorcher is just getting used to that low knockback, you know? That's pretty much it. Uh, that's the only negative thing I have. And for the Raised Cannon, again, the other negative thing I have is, well, if you have $150 million in Death Frontier or you have $500 in real life, just spend on it. The other positive for Sand Scorcher is pretty much it's worth 77 mil last I checked in the market. So really, you can spend 150 mil on a not unlimited or $500 or 77 mil on a... Uh, sand scorcher that I would say is a lot better for grinding and getting up those levels uh, but yeah guys that's pretty much it for the video I hope you guys enjoyed uh, other video coming out very soon after this one I'll be working on it whenever I can but uh, yeah hope you guys enjoyed I love you all uh, I missed you guys and yeah Sermano signing off peace <laughs>